grinding. Grinding. Peace. 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 It's a pleasure to meet you, man. I wish I was in the same room with you, man. I would shake your hand and hug you because I'm so proud of that project that you did. It was powerful and I loved it. Uh, very informative. It touched me. Um, I got some questions, um, but first off, I, I need you to introduce yourself. Peace world. My name is Tobias Prophet Smith. I'm a music producer, filmmaker, creator of the Cotton Picking Truth, still on the plantation, which features Dick Gregory and May Louise Miller. Rest in peace, rest in peace. Um, yeah, man, I've been, been, been blessed to be a part of some legendary projects in my life, man, music and film. Tell me how you met Miss Miller, who was the, like, the main character, so to speak, in the documentary. How did you meet her? So uh, my dad was producing a radio show at the time called The Warren Ballantyne Show. Um, and she was a guest on the show that day. I don't know if everybody remember that. That show was on uh, XM Radio at the time. Okay. And she was a guest on the radio show, and she came on and said, told her story. And I looked at my dad. I was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> We got to really tell that story to the world, man. And he was with it, you know what I'm saying? So that's what prompted it, hearing her on the radio. Yeah. So tell me um, how you felt about the your arrival in Mississippi. Shit, man. Um, we, so first of all, let me say this. So when we got to Mississippi... First we went to first we went to New Orleans. At the time, Miss Miller, rest in peace, she lived in, in New Orleans. So we met her in New Orleans. The okay. Original like intention of the documentary was really just focused on her. <clears throat> and while we were interviewing her, she was like, you know, this is still happening. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we was in Louisiana interviewing her, and we was like, Well, take us to where it's still happening at. We want to see this. So Right. We went up to Mississippi from Louisiana. It was like way in the back roads, you know what I'm saying? Vicksburg, um, uh, Webb, Mississippi, you know what I'm saying? Like these are places that's way, 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 way deep in the back, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So it, hold on, Tobias, not to cut you off. So technically, deep in the backwoods of Mississippi, there were people that were, this is what I got from the documentary, that were unaware that everyone else had been liberated? Um, I'm not going to say that they were unaware of it. I would say it was passed, so slavery, you know, it was passed down. So, like, like you see different people um, on the documentary, like the lady of Marks, Mississippi, that was married to the, to the white guy. You hear her talking about her grandmother and how, uh, you know, kind of like she never really owned her house, to so, so to speak, right? She lived in the house and all of that, never owned the house, though. Like, this, it's like a, it's like, it's, it's just it's passed down from generation to generation. That, and nobody ever went back to ask <coughs> who were all these people free? You know what I'm saying? So this understanding, it's almost like us being from the hood, me being from the south side of the shot. There's people that never leave the south side of the shot. <laughs> you know what I'm Got saying? It. Got it. Same, it's the same thing. There's people that never left the plantation. Okay. Got it. No, nobody ever went to ask. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nobody so, asked. Did we get everybody off? Were the, were the plantation owners present because there were certain scenes where they didn't want to talk to you and shit like that? Like, was he around? Was they around? No, so we went in, you know, giving our kids, giving toys to the kids and things like that. And they showed up. They did show up, but they were scary. They, they skirted off once they saw the cameras, you know what I'm saying? They showed up to see what we was doing, and then when they saw the cameras, they skirted off. And we was like, yeah, we better get the fuck out of here too, though, because we had, you know, we had protection, but it was still like, we don't know what all all this coming with. We way back, you know what I'm saying? Some sick habitats way out here. Right. I ever know. You was know, that so thought? Was that thought always present? The danger? Um, 
But it wasn't present until they showed up on the plantation. The oh, you seen them? You seen them? Yeah, 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 yeah. They pulled up. They never got out the car. What they was driving? Pickup truck. Okay. Yeah. Pulled Damn. up. Never got out the car. And then they skirted off real fast. You know what I'm saying? That's that's why I was like, shit. Right. Get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Because there's only three of us here with that's holding something. So So does this does the, the plantation owner, does he end up being like a landlord type of situation? Was that what this was? Because they were living on his property and shit, right? Yeah. So The, uh, if you watch the documentary, you'll hear the mayor, Johnny Thomas. Yeah. Of Pandora. We yeah. hear about it. And really what it is, is on paper, you see it looks like the median income may be like 26000 or something like that. Right? It just looks like it's poor. But that's because you got billionaires that own that vast amount of land. You know what I'm saying? You got billionaires that that own all those fields and soy, the soybean fields, cotton, et cetera. Right. That income is getting chopped up. Those families, all those people. But, you know, it's, 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 it's real slavery, bro. <laughs> it's so, like, and they still worked on these plantations. Yeah, they worked. They being, some of the women are being raped. Like, it's, it's crazy. Some of the stuff he's told us off the camera. Hold you know? on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So this, this lawlessness, this is still going on back here in the woods? Rapes and shit like that? That was in 2009, but I'm, I'm, I mean, I, Benny Thompson, um, he was, he's the, the black, he's black. And he's, a, he's the representative from that area that we reached out to countless times. He never would speak about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he definitely knows what's going on. You can't you can't represent that area and not know what's going on. It's something that in that area is not talked about, though. And I'm sure he's being paid well not to deal with it or address it properly. <clears throat> but it's definitely happening. And like I said, as a result of the documentary in 2013, and as you can Google this, <laughs> um, you know, the Thirteenth Amendment was finally ratified, but that was in two thousand and thirteen. So, how did that uh, affect them? The ratifying of the Thirteenth Amendment. So, if you look at the Thirteenth Amendment. It says that, um, in the second half of it, um, except for punishable by a crime, and so a lot of people got put on a plantation by being punished for a crime that they probably didn't commit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. That law. Okay, that law. This is post-1865, so we're talking about people getting punished for crimes, families still being placed on the plantation, and then it just continuing. All right, can I uh, relay this to, to the audience? Basically, what was going on was if someone was sentenced to prison, to a prison term in Mississippi, they were... Placed on a farm. Placed on a farm. It's, and, 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 and essentially carrying out slave duties. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, if, this was a, if this was another region, if the, so they, they pick in cotton or whatever. If this is another region and the commodity was blueberries, would it have the same st stigma? Because I've been in corrections and shit, and they they do they do farming and shit like that. So I'm trying to, you know, yeah. Does it it, it is it a stigma um, attached to it because of the the the, um, the history of Mississippi and everything attached to it? Because it's an industry. Um, I've done research on the the cot on cotton. It comes in like five six different uh, colors. Um, U.S. currency is made of cotton. Everything is 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 it's a wonderful. It's almost like a flower, basically, and shit. But it, it gets the stigma attached to it because of slavery and shit. But I, um, when they find uh, like artifacts and shit like that from 
you know, when they find artifacts, places, scripts and shit that people wrote on, a lot of times those documents were made of cotton. You know what I'm saying? So this 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 flower, it has extreme qualities. Like I said, it comes in many colors, but because of the white one and everything that happened with it, it has a bad reputation. Well, it ain't the cotton itself. It's the exploitation of the people, man. So it don't matter. Right. It's cotton, blueberry. When, when you say when you say exploitation, yeah. When you say exploitation, and somebody is sentenced to prison down there, and they put them on the farm, where do you where do you draw the conclusion of ex, exploitation? Because when you go to a, a prison in the north, wherever they fucking tell you to go to work, that's where the fuck you gonna go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and if you don't, you're gonna you're gonna deal with disciplinary shit. So um the fact that they told them to I think in Georgia they have the chain gang and shit. Uh the fact that that's going on, I'm trying to see where the the, the extreme stigma is attached to it because again, it is fucking prison and shit. Oh, no question. But I mean, first of all, you know. At that time, and, and for a long time, you didn't have to do shit to go to prison. Okay. Mississippi, you know what I'm saying? So let's, we can start there. With the whole the judicial system to begin with. Right. The whole system was designed to oppress you. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's no, it's no, um, it's no mystery as to why the prison population for black people is so much greater than for non-blacks. You know what I'm saying? All right. Like, now check it, right? For the guys who were sentenced to prison and ended up going to the plantation, on the documentary, was there, it, it, my impression was there was um, instances where people were almost spending indefinite sentences. Yeah, people was dying on the plantation, yeah. That's so what about the, the, the initial sentence that they were sentenced to? Uh-huh. The, 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 the 13th, uh, uh, that 13th, uh, Law that you that we, that we were discussing did that make it so people had to go so to the, the plan? The state, yeah, because the state law in Mississippi, at least, says at that time said that you could be sentenced to a state farm. You know, okay. state, you got to run. You got to serve your time on a state farm. That's what the law said in Mississippi. So that 13th Amendment allowed for that, yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Got it allowed the state to interpret it that way, you know what I'm saying? Okay, um, it was a black gentleman on there who had like a, a Kango, I can't recall his name, older gentleman. He, uh, he said that he asked for interviews from people in high places and they declined by all means. They they didn't want nothing to do with this project, correct? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Benny Thompson, you know, Mr. Obama at the time. You know what I mean? Right. You know, Charles Ogletree. He taught Michelle, the guy who's from Harvard that's on there. He taught Michelle and Barack. Right. Yeah, he was one of their advisors. So he came out to him, you know. He, this has been addressed at the highest level. We took this to the highest levels of government. What year did the project begin? 2009. 2009. Prior to 2009, according to Miss Hattie. That was her name, Miss Hattie, right? Miss uh, Miller, you talking about? Pardon me? Talking about Miss Miller? Miss Miller, pardon me. All right, yeah. Prior to uh, 2009, according to her or, you, uh, or your impression, what was the most recent year that slavery, slavery was actually detected down there? You saying, ask that one more time. What year? I want. I want to. I want to know. What you said you uh, the documentary began in 2009. That's when you met. You know, Miss Miller, when right. she was, uh, according to her, when did when did slavery end in Mississippi? According to her, it's never ended. According to her, I mean, she's passed away now at this point, but it never ended. 
Good according to her. That's why she took us to the plantation. That's what I'm saying. She said, you know, this is still happening. When we was interviewing her, she said that. That's how we do the plantation. Yeah. That uh that encounter that y'all had, that y'all had where y'all seen, I don't know, the slave owners from the from a distance. After the slave owners peeled out, how did the uh the residents act? Uh, some of them went back in their shacks. They had, you know, they got the shotgun houses. I'm not sure if y'all familiar with what a shotgun house is, but explain explain everyone what a shotgun house is. Shotgun house is like a one room shanty, very small wooden house where you like the wood panels. The same side as outside is the same side as on the inside. Uh, dirt floors. Um, yeah, like one room, it could be two, divided into two rooms where the kitchen is the, the back room and the living room is, the, that's it. And that's the whole house. <laughs> it's, it's fucked up. Why do you think, uh, why do you think Mississippi as a whole was like, you know, known for being so underdeveloped? Why is it so deserted like that? Why is it possible that that shit you've seen in web? Why is that shit possible? in this day and age, like people that live that far secluded into the woods, who, uh, how do they get their mail and shit like that? And I think, it, like I said, I think it's, a, I think it's just a whole system. I think some of us have sold out. Like I said, the, the, it's a brother that's, that's a representative of that area. He's in the house of representatives. You know what I'm saying? And he, on everybody down, you they know they don't talk about it, right? Um, but it, but that's part of the problem too. Is that it's not it's an unspoken thing. People are embarrassed. I think um, people are scared <laughs> for sure. Yeah, because I mean, you're talking really when you think about it. You're not just talking about like you said, cotton is it's everywhere, right? <laughs> you're talking about right. industry. Same thing with soybean down there, right? plastics made from soybean and all that. So you talk, you're not going up against, you know, just some random racist white guy. You're going up against billion dollar industries. You know what I'm saying? They got government contracts and this and that. Not, you know what I'm saying? This ain't for the faint of heart. So, so in those parts, the monopoly, they basically, they're basically going to do what the fuck they want to do down there. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, and and people are scared, man. It's fear. When uh when 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 you met the people that say you know they they weren't they they didn't want to really speak on camera when y'all got off camera, did anybody say they wanted to leave that situation? Yeah, they all wanted to leave, but none of them wanted to leave unless we can get all of them off. Like the, you know, this you is a, take, take, you had to take everybody at once. Yeah. Oh, that's logical. Yeah. How many of them was it? Um, that particular place probably was about 40 people or so. 40 that, people. On that particular part of that plantation. Yeah. Plantation, let me say this too. Like, <clears throat> I don't know how people think about plantations, but before I was actually saw one, I thought that they were not that big. I didn't realize like the plantation is miles. That shit is huge. You know what I'm saying? So what it took for Maine Miller to escape that, you know, is remarkable. So um, a person could could escape from a plantation and run for miles and miles and still be on the fucking plantation. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn. Yeah. So that movie Alice, that's that movie's about May Louise Miller. I gotta check it out. I gotta check it out. The um the part I I kinda got lost on is when she got away and she allowed them to take her, you know, take her back or take her to other plantations or whatever. What was that because of her conditioning or she didn't, they don't, those people in that part of Mississippi, they didn't know any other civilization besides that. 
Right. That was that was that was her everyday life. You understand what I'm saying? From birth. So that was what that was her understanding of what normal was. See what I'm saying? So in her mind, like you said, it's the conditioning. Her mind that was life for her to be a slave. So yeah, she just went to another plantation and then she escaped from there. So ultimately for her to get to New Orleans, she became a, a, a an escaped slave. Yeah. All right. Now, when she escaped, wasn't everybody else in the South free already? I mean, not, not everybody. Not in Mississippi. <laughs> I'm, the rest of the South. Right. You're saying like, yeah, well, I mean, so technically we all supposed to be free, right? Yeah. Was there still slavery in, in Alabama and Georgia and shit like that at this time? Absolutely. It's, it's something in... Um, so in the process of making this film, I just I investigated, like, you know, in general, slavery across the United States. And it's something in, in, um, in the Department of Justice in D.C. called the Peonage Files. Right. When you go look at these files, you'll see reports from different priests. A lot of Catholic priests wrote to the government reporting different slavery um, across the country, right? Years and years and years, and, and I mean, yeah. Now this is <laughs> this has been happening a long time. Man. That's why I'm celebrating. Now the uh, the revelation of white slaves was that shocking to you? Nope. <clears throat> because you were, the, you were aware of that already. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Dick Gregory was my mentor, so. All right, I was going to get to Dick. That was one of the last questions. I right, go yeah. ahead. Go, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I'd already been aware of uh, whites being able to buy their, purchase their slavery every seven years. Right. Yeah, the no, whites, that wasn't that wasn't a shock to me. Um, just because, I mean, I know this is all based on economics. It's a system. Right. My, um, I, ha I just have to say this because I came to this understanding amongst myself recently. My understanding, I may, I may have even heard someone speaking on this topic, but my understanding, like a lot of people's understanding of slavery, is from Alex Haley and from television and shit like that. And um, that's something that we were force fed. And the truth was there were other slaves, there were other slaves, other nationalities were, were enslaved throughout, throughout history. Um, when conquerors rolled up, if you wasn't armed correctly, they was grabbing people up and enslaving people. A lot of people was doing that to their own people. You know what I'm saying? And recently I seen, um, think that I think it was Uganda made an apology for enslaving people. Did you see that? I did. What did you think about that? Um, you know, it's a step in the right direction, man. <clears throat> um, but I mean, it's, it, to me, it's disgusting to enslave anybody. You know what I mean? Right. It's your own people is, it's just, it's even worse to me. It's something about that. Um, I was flabbergasted. I said, "Damn, is this shit for real? Like, is he really apologizing for this shit? Like, they did this shit to people." Yeah. What do you think that body of people went, according to history? You said, "Where do I think they went?" Yeah, the people that he was apologizing to. I looked at a video earlier today, and slaves went to different parts of the country. I mean, I mean different parts of the world, the Caribbean, Jamaica, and, you know what I mean, Haiti. And What do you think that they went, those people from, the, the people that he's apologizing to, where do you think they went to serve out their slavery? Man, uh, I'm not sure. I, I feel like they went all across, all across the world, probably. Do you agree with uh you know my theory that other other nationalities enslaved enslaved their enslaved had slaves and shit like that? Italians might have enslaved enslaved Italians. You know what I'm saying? Uh Africans did the slave with Africans, Asians might have did the same thing, et cetera, et cetera. I, I do believe that's true. You know what I'm saying? I absolutely believe that's true. Um, 
we do know that the Arabics enslaved us longer than any anybody else in, in Africa. We, we did a thousand years of slavery. The Arabics, uh, Muslim, the Arabic Muslim slave trade in Africa was a thousand years. So, right. Yeah, we. Yeah, that happened all over the world for sure. Would, would you say the slave trade? I mean, so but based on what we're saying, the slave trade can't be centered on Africa. If if people came from other places, right? Um, it can't be centered on Africa because whenever it's discussed, they act like it was one motherfucking slave ship or three of them, and they came from fucking Africa, all slaves. <laughs> That's the perception of it. Talking about chattel, ch let's let's play, let's let's fully break this down though. Chattel slavery was different than other forms of slavery throughout the world too. We got okay. chattel slavery was explicit to America. <laughs> it was not chattel slavery everywhere else. Meaning brutal slavery like being beat, blah blah blah. Got that, it. that wasn't slavery all around the world. In fact, not the Nazis studied American slavery and racism when they wanted to institute German rule over over um <clears throat> over the um what's the word I'm looking for man the um you know when they were treating the Jews the way that they were they wanted to institute they studied American slavery and American racism and said it was too harsh. Right. Like wow. and so when we when we uh we talk about American slavery it's different than slavery around the world or slavery throughout history. Slavery in Egypt was like American American work week. You just had to work eight hours a day. That was slavery in Egypt in biblical times. So yeah, I mean slavery has been so-called slavery has been instituted by people of, their, of, of different nationalities on their own people for centuries and years and eons. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we agree on that. Now, why was it forced? Why do you think it was force-fed to us that it only happened to us? You know, like through school, through history, the imagery and shit like that. Do you think they had a motive in doing that? I think it's motive behind everything. I think everything is intentional. I think it's definitely there so that you get mentally trapped in the loop of, of slavery in that sense. One thing, right. Documentary, and by the way, I want to say the name of the documentary because I see people keep asking the name. Yeah, yeah. They, I wanted you to uh, reintroduce yourself because a lot of people, we get a lot. The name of the. Reintroduce yourself and uh, tell them the name of the documentary and where, where, where it's available at. The name of the film is Cotton Picking Proof. My name is Tobias Smith, I'm a music producer, filmmaker, um, producer of the film. And it's called The Cotton Picking Truth, still on the plantation. It's available on Amazon. Please, please, please support it, share it, discuss it, grow from it, be inspired by it. Right. <clears throat> um, what was the question we were talking about? Uh, let me see. Uh, we have some questions. Uh, I'm glad that we made it known that uh, we weren't the only people enslaved. And I, I, when I thought about it, when I asked myself, what's your understanding of slavery? It's from shit that I've seen on TV and what I was, I guess, taught in school and shit. But, you know, now that I'm an adult and I've been able to you know, study different cultures and history and shit like that, I said, damn, there's slavery everywhere and shit. Absolutely. You know I, mean? I think Absolutely. people should people should know that. Now, with that being said, if there is slavery everywhere, would that mean that uh, anybody is owed reparations? I'm only concerned with us. Yeah. <laughs> because we talk about economically the greatest, you know, country in the world that benefited more than any other country ever. Right, and didn't share with their people. When you talk about like other countries, like for example, Muammar Gaddafi, you know what I'm saying? The citizens all benefit, every citizen 
benefited from the oil industry. You know oh, okay. Saying? Yeah. Like it's a little it's different. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. This is this is chat. They, they owe us a few things. They owe us everything. <laughs> <laughs> they owe us everything. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So like when when you talk about that, I mean I can't I I can't relate necessarily to everybody else. I can agree with them, I can sympathize with them, but I can't fully relate because I know what, what our circumstances are. I gotta deal with what we're dealing right. with. Right. You know what I'm saying? The um throughout the documentary there was some very, very potent clips of, of Dick Gregory. Were those a prior speech or y'all were sitting down there building with him for this for this project? We was building with him for this project, man. Oh man, bad motherfucker, man. You a bad motherfucker, Tobias. You a bad motherfucker. Bad motherfucker. Bad motherfucker, man. Bro. You just trumped my whole resume with that one interview, man. Like you got the the superb dribbler himself, man. Tell you. I love, love listening to him speak. He was so overly ready to do this interview, bro. I mean, listen, the interview is so much longer than what's in the piece. The interview was just with him was like two and a half hours. Oh, yeah. We still got a bunch of footage it's just like unused, man. He was so overly ready to just go crazy. Yeah. Hey, he, man. Was teaching. he was teaching. He came in with this much research sitting next to him. You know, on Mississippi? On this. Everything, all kind of things. Right. The economic impact, and how, you know, why we owed slave uh, reparations and the whole thing. Who is it? Who's admitted to us being owed reparations over the years? And who else got reparations in this country over the years? You know what I'm saying? What yeah. other got it? Like, he was just ready, man. <laughs> he was just. That's who. Um... Your documentary made me aware that there was white slaves, and that's how I pursued that that knowledge that I have now that there were slaves in other civilizations. It was all born on your documentary. Okay. Now, when he when he went into that, did he ever say the origin of the white slaves? Where did they come from? Uh, he, he he didn't never talk about the origin, but my understanding. So, you know. This country was founded by people who were kicked, who were imprisoned, and who were like the derelicts of society in, in Great Britain. Right. Some people, some people saying Ireland. Do you think they were? Um, I can't recall, but did did, did it say that, was they on a slave ship with black people? I would imagine they came. Some of them came prior. And that's why they came here slaughtering, you know, Native Americans, which, you know, I don't separate Natives from us. I believe we all won. And truthfully, I think we was already here. That's just my opinion. They saying that they were Slavic slaves. Some people said they came from Europe. They saying Slavics were slaves as well. We want to know how they got to motherfucking Mississippi. <laughs> that's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know, because then we have absolute proof. Like we gonna have, we need lineage. We need to know. I want someone to confirm that, because they had to come from somewhere. It's gonna be hard, hard to confirm, though. Huh? <laughs> like my family origin, my on my mother's side is is from Mississippi. That's the real thing that's crazy about this documentary is where we found the plantations at is where my grandmother left and moved to Chicago. So okay. I was looking at myself on that plantation. You see what I'm saying? Potentially had yeah. my grandmother stayed. That's what was really crazy when I really got a chance to talk to my mother about the origins of like my the family. Right. That word, you know what I'm saying? So it's uh, this is a highly spiritual um, project for me. You know what I'm saying? I know goddamn well that shit was spiritual. 
I felt that in my spirit when I was down there. I was down there for a few hours. I said, there's no way in Sam hell I'm spending the night down here. Yes, sir. You know, we got to drive to Alabama to get a hotel. <laughs> like, we gotta get the fuck from down here. I'm a city nigga. It ain't no. It ain't. It wasn't a bunch of street lights and shit. That was the first red flag. First red flag. The absence of lighting. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I don't even do that around niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You think I'm going to Mississippi fucking around in the dark? No. Man, listen. And, uh, you know, you you know how you can um you know you working off GPS and shit like that. Yeah, any you can't make no mistakes with GPS in Mississippi. There's no room for error. No. You know what I mean? I was thinking cemetery the whole time. Everything I the whole time I was thinking the mines. I gotta get the fuck from down here, man. I was down there with a chick. She went to see her family and shit, man. Like they, you know, they they start cooking and shit, man. I'm like, man, we need to take the food to go, man. The, the sun is starting to go down. <laughs> I'm not used to this shit, man. Uh-uh. Yeah, it's real. It's definitely real. Um, yeah, it's, we stayed in Jackson overnight. We just drive all the way back to Jackson just to how get. How far was how far was your drive from the sticks to to back to civilization? Seemed like forever, man. I still couldn't sleep. It was like probably like three hours or something. I don't know. Now let me tell. Let me exp let me get the um. Why couldn't you sleep? Was that the danger or the adrenaline aspect? No, it was just. I mean, it was just disbelief. <laughs> you know, I couldn't believe what I had just saw. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? The whole shit was just like the fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It blew me away. I right. Was, I couldn't sleep. Right. Couldn't sleep. Like when you get money. You know what I'm saying? You ain't never had a, a bunch of money before. Same, that same feeling. Of right. Like, like, can't sleep. Did Miss M now, when did Miss Miller make it to civilization? Like, she, she, she was mentioning how she didn't know what a heifer meant into the 70s or some shit like that. Like, when did she make it to where she started to become civilized and wearing shoes and shit like that? Like, she explained what year? It was the 60s. The 1960s? Yeah. <laughs> Late 60s. She, um... Yeah, when she escaped slavery, that was the, that was the 60s. That she's... I Boom. I needed you to say it. She escaped, escaped slavery in the late 60s. Wasn't the rest of the fucking world free of slavery in the late 60s? The world? No. The, the down south. Wasn't Martin Luther King and them marching and shit? Wasn't shit going in order for all of this stuff to take place? You said the late 60s, right? A lot yeah. of that happened in 1968, 1967, yeah. something, stuff yeah. like that. Now, if they were already out marching and singing and shit like that, how the fuck was she still a slave? Because nobody ever went back to that part. Nobody, I mean. That's what I've been trying to get out to you, this whole documentary. And it's still. You know, That's I'm, what makes this documentary traumatic. But That's I mean, what I've been trying to stress the whole time. The rest of the world was free or fighting for liberation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The civil rights movement and shit. Right, right. How was she. Below the Jim Crow law, she hadn't even made it to, 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 the, to the discrimination shit. Like she was still, how was this? How was this possible? Because it's the same thing. Like, like I said, growing up in Chicago, I'm from the South Side. There's people I know never left the South Side. You know, All right, boom. Experience. Now, okay, now they they never left. <laughs> right. I'm you talking. Stay, you wait, you you gonna stay wait, down there to get raped and on. get your ass whooped and all of that shit wait, because you're comfortable there. Let me be clear. There's people that's never left and went downtown Chicago. I'm saying. Right. <coughs> be downtown. But you okay. don't. Now uh, she was a uh, she was illiterate. Of course, she couldn't read signs and shit. Like she didn't know direction or, or nothing like that. So. Right. Her best bet was like. I, I'm gonna just stay here because walking off, I can get lynched some fucking where, some shit like that. That's what's yeah. going on in her mind. All of that, and just general fear. Period. We talking about the whole conditioning that's taking place. I mean, it's hard for us to conceive it 
the way that we've, you know, experienced life. But I mean, if you can imagine never having experienced this version of life, you see what I'm saying? From birth. You should have took all they motherfucking ass hostage. You should have put their ass in a goddamn van. Y'all getting the fuck from down here. <laughs> like when Katrina happened and they evacuated. Yeah. Y'all getting the fuck from down here. I'm calling some motherfucking body. <laughs> Y'all getting the fuck from down here today? It's today, the, today, it's today, though. huh? The fear is strong, man. Because, but bro, like, I met God with damn, like, I feel like, I feel like something has to be done. They probably still down there. You think they're still down there? Absolutely, man. We should have took them <laughs> niggas hostage, man. They hostage already. Absolutely, they already hostage. Listen, so they listen. need to be snatched the fuck up and removed, man, and dropped the fuck off in the land of some motherfucker where him get your ass out there. The fuck right. is y'all doing? The right. rest of these mother the world is motherfucking free. Do you know it's black people millionaires out here? Billionaires. And y'all still in the goddamn woods? This is crazy. I feel the same way about some people that's I know. That's how we got here tonight, man, because I was trying to figure out I'm like, that's what fucked me up. The, the the years, the dates that she was saying, I'm like, what the fuck is she talking about? She escaped from slavery. Girl, don't you know the motherfucker's been free for years and shit? Like, what the, the fuck? Fear. Like, it's that fear, bro. Fear is strong, man. Damn. Fear is strong, bro. And that conditioning of, of fear. The shit is unbelievable, man. It ain't it ain't about, you know, them knowing that people are free. Yeah, they know. They know that. We had a black president, you know, all that. You know what I'm saying? But it's still that conditioning of what they've experienced. You see what I'm saying? And they said on camera, I ain't got good sense. I'm from the city. When they said, we had said off camera, I'd have pulled my motherfucking hammer out, cocked that motherfucker. You can say what the fuck you want to say right now. You can say what the fuck you want to say. We free. Ain't no motherfucking body gonna do nothing to you today. You feel me? We can get the fuck up out of here right now. We can get in the whip and get the fuck up out of here right now. Say what the fuck you want. They probably ain't never said what the fuck they want in life. My nigga, that's fucking crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's man. Crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, we see it. Like Dick Gregory said in the in the film, we see it every day. Corporate America, people not saying what they want to say. Say like, the name of the documentary. They checking for you, man. I told you this shit was going to be good, man, because I got some people that be on some other shit sometime, man, and they need this. This is good dope. You see the smoke? This is good dope. This is good dope. They need this, man. They need this. We got all the smoke. We got all the smoke. All the smoke. Uh -huh. <laughs> All the smoke. Yes, Word. sir. Go, go, Word. go. Got the cotton picking truth still on the plantation. It's on Amazon. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Share. That's yes. something to boast about, man, in a major way. Um, accreditations or accolades. What happened after the release of this masterpiece? Because you need to be held in a high regard. You bigger than me for sure. That's You bigger than me, my nigga. You's a bad motherfucker. You're a bad motherfucker, man. You should, you're supposed to take some Negroes with you, man. <laughs> I'll do so, uh, Minister Farrakhan. You know, one of the ass, man. I'm about to take y'all out to eat. Matter of fact, y'all gonna spend the night with me. We gonna go to uh, New Orleans and left their ass there. <laughs> but I do want to... their ass in New Orleans, yo. I do Straight want... up. I do want to say, Minister Farrakhan, I met with him, and he he did send brothers down to do that. And um, they wouldn't leave, man. So the, all right, so the rescue mission was sent on behalf of the Nation of Islam. Yes, sir. That's what the fuck I'm talking about, man, because them niggas don't be moving out like they used to. They need to go back down there. They need to go the fuck back down there, man. Check on things. Word up. Yeah, man. It's been, you know, fear is a hell of a thing, bro. It's a hell of a Damn. thing. Hell of a conditioning to deal with. 
how long did it take, you know, to, for you to edit and get your proper project when you say, yo, this is potent right here, this is it? It took a year. The original piece was two and a half hours. We was like, yeah, that might be too long, even though it was, it was a hell of a thing. It was a hell of a piece, the original one. Yeah. Half, but we cut it down to seven sixty-eight minutes. So uh, it was, it took a year. It took a year to get it right. Well, Someone says, "Why don't black billionaires build a new black community with resources to get us ahead?" I don't know about all that us shit, man. We, uh, us as a whole, we need to all start proactively working collectively. Everybody need to dribble. That's it. You feel me? Um, I was just telling my man yesterday, oh, um, we was building and shit. I was like, man, when I started my career and shit, I, me, I had the, um, you know, the mindset of like a rapper that, you know, some company or some big executive was going to come along and scoop me up, you know, and put me on and shit like that. And it just don't work like that, man. It just don't work out like that. You know what I mean? You got to get out here and put your thing down. But the shit that you did is, is some of the most powerful shit I've seen on media, man. It's up there with, you know, the George Jackson story. You know what I mean? Like, word, man. Like, for real. The, the Black Liberation shit. Like, you made an impact like a motherfucker. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Um, and the film, it inspired a lot of other filmmakers. You know, 13th came out after, um, like I said, Alice came out last year. Right. You keep Palmer. Um, and it's watered down. That You know, they, they stuff is watered down. But, like. Let me ask you something, right? You said Alice came out last year with Kiki Palmer. Yeah. Now. She was introduced to us as a Keela to be, right? And she just she's doing this role right here to have, which has some meaning and prestige and shit. But when you see her on stage performing and you know doing her thing, man, how do you feel about her conduct? I don't feel no way about it, man. I don't. I don't really judge. I try not to judge people's, you know judge people's decisions or what they do too much because we all trying to make it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody's, everybody got, you know, they, they times and moments when they ain't perfect. None of us perfect. Man. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just, I just, I'm just an observer. Word. I try not to judge people too much, man. I know I ain't perfect. So I don't really, I don't really, you know, get into judging people's decisions too much unless they raping kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should be put to death at that point. I don't feel like no rehabilitation is is real for people that do that. But other than that, <laughs> that's I don't really I don't really judge nothing else. What uh what platform is Alice is Alice, Alice playing on right now? Um, I think I watched it on Amazon too. I believe it's okay. on. On Netflix, one of them, I can't remember. Let me, let me look it up real quick, man. I know I watched it like three months ago. And I, and I didn't know at the time that that it was inspired by May Miller. Until I, I, you know, I watched it, I said, man, this is May's story. To right. some, you know, they chop, they, you, know, you know how they do. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. It was, uh, it really, they really, if you Google it, it'll tell you, like, yeah, this story is inspired by May Louise Miller. And okay. They gave her acknowledgement. That's, 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 that's dope. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. It doesn't say what's, what platform it's on. That's crazy. Somebody just said, I didn't realize Common was in it. Yeah. Shout out to Common, man. I think it's on. I'm pretty sure it's on on um on Amazon. Amazon. Tell them where they could uh, find you at. You've been a great guest. I'm glad we got this done, man. It's very very important to me. Uh, tell them uh, your contact information, your name. Again. We got a couple of shameless plugs, man. Can I? Yeah, yeah. We gotta we gotta make sure we get it right. One of them is jpaymusic.com. 
It's a platform that I just launched on people who are any artist, musician, singer, whoever. Playmusic.com. Get your music on that platform and make some real money um, inside of the prison system. Prisoners got to pay, what, like two ninety nine dollars a song. And you keep 80% of that, prison keeps 20%. Mm -hmm. That's a dope deal. I might got to do something with Pillmatic. That's nice. Absolutely, you do. So go to jpaymusic.com. Get signed up. Click on Get Started, sign up. Get you all your music on there so you can make real money uh, independently. Do you, um, got, uh, do you got a link to the uh, documentary you could put in the chat? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, and they can find me on on Instagram at Profit the Producer, P R O F I T. That's Profit like money, the producer on IG. Which one do I go to? The top chat or live chat? Go to the live, live chat. chat. Here go the link, y'all, to the uh, documentary. Y'all can check it out, man. It's very riveting. You're going to be stuck. You start watching it, you're going to be stuck. Did you put it in there? Because mine ain't working right. Uh, oh, I thought you dropped it in there and shit. Hold on. Let me... It's on Amazon Prime. It's called The Cotton Picking Truth. I appreciate y'all for coming through, man. I appreciate Profit, the producer. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get the notifications. I'm about to get up out of here. Is he back? I'm here. I'm trying to uh, put this in the chat. But, like, the little chat box ain't coming up. They said Alex is on stars. Okay, I'm going to check it out when I get up out of here. P, I appreciate you, man. You can hey, try. Link, can you put it in the chat? Mm -hmm. Reason they wouldn't let me put it in the chat. Let me see. I ain't never typed on live. I don't know. I get it to him. I put it in the description, man. I appreciate your time, though. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work, my nigga. Absolutely, right. man. Peace. Wow.